If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of BT Theory. So today we're going to explain the video that we just did about why do we even simplify a PDA. So remember what we did was we ensured that there was a single final state. So only one final state and that was pretty easy to do. We just went from all previous final states to a single final state. Uh, we also ensured that the stack uh, ends empty. So remember a PDA has a stack and the traditional definition doesn't require that the stack be empty, but we could, we could modify the PDA so that it actually does end empty. And the way we did that was we pushed on a special symbol at the very beginning, going to the original start state. And from this single final state down here, we actually had another transition to a different state, which is now the only final state that popped that same symbol. So the symbol that we put on at the beginning was the bottom of stack marker. And in order to accept, we have to pop that off anyway. So we can ensure that the stack actually does end empty. And the other thing, which is also crucial, is that every transition either pushes, I should learn to spell, pushes or pops, but not both. And I mentioned that the reason for this is to make sure that the stack height goes up, down a one every single time. It's never going to be flat. So why do we even talk about, why do we even do that? So let's actually try to analyze what happens. So I'm gonna make a little plot here. So uh, the, the horizontal axis is gonna be time. And by time, I mean the number of transitions that are taken. And the vertical axis is going to be the stack height. So obviously, at the very beginning, the stack is going to have size zero. And at the very end, it's going to have size zero because we can ensure that the stack ends empty. But every single transition, what's going to happen is it either goes up by one or down by one. And because the beginning is empty, it has height zero, that means that this, the first transition, if it's going to do one, actually has to uh, go up by one. So the stack height actually has to go up by one here. And actually at the very end, it has to go down by one too. So we can do something like this. But of course, I don't know necessarily what's gonna happen in the middle. We know uh, that it can never hit the bottom here, right? Because uh, at only at the very end would it ever be able to hit uh, with no stack height because we put that bottom of stack marker on. And there's a variant where you're allowed to uh, hit empty somewhere in the middle, but I'm going to assume that we never hit this uh, zero line at any point here. Okay, so, but I know, but it could be that we push here and then we keep pushing and then we go down, then up, then down, then up. So maybe it comes down to height one again at some point, that's totally possible. Then maybe it comes up again, down, and then maybe hits down here. Okay, so I don't know necessarily what's gonna happen here, but I know that what can't happen is that we are at some point and we are level after a single transition. So this is not allowed because we forbade any transition that either did nothing or pushed and popped, which means it would have the same stack height after the transition. So no matter what, it's either gonna go up by one every time or down by one. Okay, so let's actually try to analyze this. So uh, what, we, what we want to do is to be able to analyze what happens here and see if there's anything useful that we can uh, obtain from this. So clearly, uh, on this transition, we are pushing that special symbol. I'm going to call it dollar sign here. And of course, over here, we're going to pop that same uh, dollar sign because um, we never hit zero in the middle. 
So that means we could have never popped the dollar sign to begin with. And if we end up at zero stack height, we have to have nothing on the stack, which means we popped this. So really the interesting things are when we do this, when we look at this part of the computation right here, it could, with respect to this blue line right here, hit zero. And I'm gonna define zero as being this blue line because it's never gonna go below the blue line anyway. So it could hit uh, zero right here. But let's actually try to blow this up a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in here. So let's look at this part of the computation right here, just this first half. And I'm going to assume because of this, this first half, it's never going to hit zero in between here. So the reasoning we just did is identical to what we just talked about. So if we look at it from this perspective, whatever we push on this first transition is going to be whatever we pop on this one. So we can actually say here that these two transitions are going to match. And by match, I mean that they push something and the other one pops the exact same thing. And it can't be anything else because it never hits zero, quote unquote, in between. And because of that, whatever we push here, because we return to the same level before, after that, we must pop the exact same thing. Okay, so what we can do is to say, well, what we, if we want to do something with this, we can see here that whatever we read along this part right here, so whatever takes us from this point to here, and whatever takes from here to here, so I'm actually going to give these names. So let's call this location A, this one I'm going to call B, and this one I'm going to call C. And by location, I mean the state that we're in. So uh, if I want to get from A to C, then if I can get from A to B and from B to C, then I, I claim I can get from A to C. Why? Because they're at the same stack height at every point. So the reasoning behind this is that if I can get from A to B, then with the exact same stack height, and from B to C with the same stack height, then that means I can get from A to C with the exact same stack height. Cool. And we can apply this reasoning over here. If I want to get from the, the start state to the final state, which means we accept the string, then that means that we got to figure out if there's a matching transition at the beginning and the end, which in our construction there is, in other constructions there may or may not be, um, then what we need to do is to say for this middle piece, can we break it up into these mountains, so to speak? So I, I, when I teach this, I call these mountains. So can I break it up into several mountains right here, such that each one of them is uh, a sing oops, each one of them is a single mountain, and I can get from the starting point to the end point with uh, with the exact same stack height. And you can think of this because um, if we try to do this one level more, so I'm going to put a dotted line here, then what we're asking is, if I can get from A to B, then and there's a matching transition, then I must be able to get from this point to this point. And then we can recursively solve this problem. Um, so what we're asking is, if I want to get from A to B, then I have to figure out, well, is there a matching transition? And if there is, then, then can I also get from the ending point of this transition to the starting point of this transition with the exact same stack height? And because it's a recursive structure, we can actually make a context-free grammar based off of that because context-free grammars are inherently recursive. And so the way that we're going to model this is we're going to have a variable that represents all the possible strings that take us from one place, say A, to another place, let's call B. So then I'll have a variable corresponding to going from A to B with the exact same stack height, and then a rule 
will be involving, if there's a matching transition in the PDA like this, that where A is the start of the push one and B is the pop of the end one, and we can get from this point to this point, then we can make a rule that tells us how to get from A to B with the exact same stack height. And that's all that we will do. And we'll show how to convert this to a context free grammar in the next video. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about this, um, this reasoning and this logic down into the comments. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And as always, I'll see you next time.